Okay, so what we have here is um, we have a animation. Uh, uh, so a fish that was rigged um, and then duplicated for each frame of his cycle. So, um, so you can see if we just solo this guy, right? Um, so this was the beginning of the animation. If we come all the way back down to... Um, this one, we can see that that's kind of like back at the end of the loop. So uh, 65 and, and 61 uh, are actually uh, pretty similar. Okay, so, uh, and then with all these uh, between. So that's essentially what this is, like a walk cycle or something like that, where each um, frame, uh, the geometry for that uh, cycle was duplicated and we have an actual geometry uh, reference of that. <laughs> okay, so um, moving on. So that's basically what this is. So we've got uh, 65 frames or uh, 65 uh, geometry references of that cycle. Okay, so what we want to do, let's just go ahead and group all of this. Fish group. Okay, so we want to create a particle system where we can uh, emit our uh, fish from and have them swim around. So first thing to do is we want to uh, change this to effects up here in the left-hand corner. And we're going to go to in particles and we are going to create an emitter. Okay, over here um, in our emitter one tab, we have our emitter type, and so we've looked at that a little bit. For this instance, I want to change this to a volume. Okay, so everything inside of this volume is where the uh, particles will be uh, emitted from. Uh, this is a little bit small, so we're going to scale that up. And you can actually see as I scale it up here um, in the transform attributes for the emitter, we can see what's going on over there. So I'm just going to scale it up, something like that. Okay, so now we have this emitter that is going to fill up with, uh, with particles. And I'm going to hide this group just for a minute. So now if we play through that, we'll see that we have um, particles emitting from within this. Okay, so first off, I don't want the fish falling. So let's uh, turn our gravity off. So I'm going to click on Nucleus. And I'm going to come down to Gravity, and I'm going to change that to zero okay so the next thing I want to do now let's go to our emitter and I want some more fish so I'm gonna change that to a thousand and I'm just gonna play this forward down here by one frame let's go to frame two and so that looks okay just to get a few fish in there so we're here on rates um, particles per sec I'm just gonna right click on that set key step forward one more frame and we're actually going to put that at zero and set key. <laughs> okay. That way, as we step forward now, we'll just see we give birth to these particles. And, um, yeah, and we don't get any more after that. Okay, so you can see a little bit of movement. Uh, that's uh, just to our away from center here. Uh, and that's okay for right now. I do kind of like that because that's going to help us visualize some things. Okay. So... Now that we have uh, that uh, sorted, what we want to do now is let's open up this fish group. And I just, uh, again, you hide by hitting H, right? So I've got that off. Okay, so I just want to click fish 1, scale all the way down to where I can see fish 65, and I'm going to shift, click that, and that'll give me all of those. So that's great. Then I'm going to hold control down, um, so not shift now. Uh, so now I'm going to hold control down and I'm going to click the end particle one. Okay. All right. So up here in the end particles tab, and if I open that up, I will, I have this, um, instancer. And so, uh, that's basically going to copy the fish, um, through an instance to each of the particles. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And as I play through now, we get these fish attached to the particle. Okay. Shrink some of this up. Um, okay, so the next thing we want to look at is um, we want to look at 
some of our instance uh, attributes. And so if I uh, go to in particle, if I select in particle and I go to our in particle shape one tab, um, if I come down here to our instancer tab, okay, um, so this is our instancer, which uh, controls some uh, attributes and, and things like that for our instance geometry that is attached to our particles. Okay, so let's take a look at some of this. So the first thing I want to do is if I come down here, okay, and I'm looking through here, and if I see aim direction, what I want to do is I want to click on that, and I want to change our aim direction to our velocity, okay? And so, if you remember, our particles are actually moving away from the center. And so now you can see that our particles are, um, uh, or our instance geometry is now facing uh, the direction uh, that we are moving. Except in this situation, our particles are actually, or our instance uh, geometry is actually backwards. But essentially, we can see that it's working. We've got you know details uh, facing the direction that that we're moving. Okay. Okay, so that's that's pretty good. Okay, one thing I noticed is uh, before we move on and fix velocity, um, I noticed that we don't have our um, our actual uh, animation happening. So let's come over here and we'll see instancer one. Let's click on instancer one. Okay. And we should get instancer one up here in. In our, in, in our tab over here. So looking at this, again, making sure that I'm in my attribute editor here all the way to the right. I just want to change this cycle from none to sequential. <laughs> now as I play through this, we'll see if we get our fish wagging their uh, tails or their fins, so to speak. And so we've got, you know, these little side fins moving, we've got our back tails moving we're getting some um some animation happening okay so that's great all right so let's go back to our in particle one and so we have this facing the velocity but the way it's working with our animation um is that things are backwards okay there's a multitude of things that we could do to fix that um I'll show you one easy thing that we can do, and since we're going to be creating some of our own uh, custom uh, attributes anyways, I think that this could be a good fix and, and a good example for that. So let's come up here to our per particle array attributes, okay, and we're going to make uh, three of our own custom attributes. So I'm going to come here, and I'm going to click on uh, Add Dynamic Attributes, and this time we're going to click on General. And we should get a window like this. Okay, so for our first thing, we're going to want to create, you know, our own velocity. So using my um, can be a, uh, a good way to kind of just for you to be able to look through here and, and recognize what your attributes are. So my velocity. Okay. So that's the first thing we've got to do is choose our name. Uh, we're going to keep it as keyable. Now, if we think of velocity, right, that's a vector. There's um, three values to that for, for the vector of our velocity. So we want to make sure that this is set to vector, right? So we want our new velocity uh, to be a vector as well. Okay. We don't want this to be scalar, which would be across the entire particle object, so it would be all the particles together, we want this to be the velocity of each particle. Okay, so my velocity, vector, and per particle. So we just want to make sure we click these little dots next to those. Okay, if I click OK, this will go away. Um, I'm just going to click Add so it doesn't. Uh, we're going to make a couple other attributes, and we'll talk about those as we uh, create them or put them into effect. But our next one is we, we want to randomize the start. Okay, so we're going to come up with my start. Um, for per particle, you can see the integer is grayed out. Uh, that's okay, we, we do want integers, um, but in this situation, it will round. So if let's, 
uh, a float value, it's okay. So my start float, and let's keep that as per particle. And then we'll come down here and click add. And let's make one more. We're gonna call this my scale. And again, you know, we scale x, y, and z, so that's gonna be a vector. So we'll change that to vector and per particle. And okay. And now you can see over here in our per particle attributes, we have my velocity, my uh, scale, and my start. So we want to go ahead and start writing some uh, custom uh, or some expressions for our custom um, attributes. Before we do that, let's go ahead and add a turbulence field to our particles just so we can get uh, a little more movement. So making sure that we have our particles selected. Let's come up to fields and solvers and let's click that. And let's come down to turbulence. So again, making sure that this is highlighted, come to fields and solvers and then turbulence. Okay, so let's turn this up. So from five to something like 50, I'm gonna bring the attenuation down to 25. Sometimes I do like to change the uh, interpolation type. I do feel like we can get a better quality with quadratic. So I'm just gonna change that to quadratic. Okay. All right, so now we have uh, a little bit of turbulence actually moving our uh, fish around. So now I'm going to select and go back to my uh, in particle uh, tab. And we want to write a couple of expressions. So for our first uh, a custom attribute, let's uh, affect our velocity. So if I right click on velocity, right we have a turbulence field we have some dynamics going on so we have our choices here creation runtime bef uh, before dynamics and runtime after so we want our velocity to update after dynamics so we're going to click on that and we could copy this whole thing right here and just bring it down here okay or we could actually even middle mouse drag that down and we'll just bring it down uh, but also, I know that Maya will fill in a lot of this stuff for me. Um, so a lot of times I'll just type, you know, my velocity. Okay. And we're just going to equal, have that equal uh, velocity. Now I could do in particle shape one dot velocity and all that sort of stuff. But uh, if we just keep it simple, um, I think this is just easier uh, for us to type. So my velocity. Okay equals velocity. So right now, my velocity is equal to velocity. There's no change. But we want to invert um, our velocity uh, so that our fish face the other direction. So let's just uh, times this by a negative one. And let's click uh, create. So again, up here we have runtime after dynamics. Okay, and we're just doing this little um, expression right here. So my velocity equals velocity times negative one. And then we just want to make sure that we have a semicolon in there. Okay, let's create that. Okay. I'm going to close that. I'm going to come back to my instancer. Okay, so here's my instancer um, area, right? So I'm going to come back in here, and for aim direction, I'm going to click on this. And if I come down, we'll actually see our new attributes that we've made. So I'm going to change that to my velocity. Now if we play that, the fish, the mouth or the face of the fish will now um, aim towards the direction that the uh, particle is uh, traveling, so to speak, or the velocity. Um, so that'll make our fish look like they're uh, moving in a direction. And don't worry, we're going to rescale these uh, down. These are pretty big right now. Um, so we'll do that here in a minute. <clears throat> okay. So talking about that, let's actually come uh, here and let's right click on my scale. And I want these to be just generally size different. So I don't want it to update after or before dynamics. I want them to just be born um, with a random randomized scale. So some fish are bigger, some fish are smaller. So right click and then we'll go to creation expression. And I'm just going to type in my scale equals, and we're going to type in expression, 
rand. Okay, and then we're going to do 0 0.1, and we're going to do comma 0 0.5. So what this will return for us is this is going to return for each particle, right? Because this is uh, we made our uh, scale to be a per particle attribute. So for each particle, um, we're going to get a random, randomized per particle attribute. Um, attribute my scale on a per particle basis okay so what that means is for every particle I'm gonna get something uh, between the numbers of 0 0.1 and 0 0.5 so it's gonna be randomized across all, all the particle instances okay so I'm gonna click create okay I'm gonna go ahead and close that now if I come down here to uh, to our instancer again um, we'll see under general options we'll see scale so I'm gonna click on scale if I scroll down, I'll see my scale. So now I'm going to uh, rewind to the beginning, and I'm going to play. And so now you'll see we have fish of uh, varying sizes, and they've been scaled down quite a bit. Um, but as you can see, we've got some fish uh, with this scale. So that guy's a little pretty big. And then we have some fish over here that are you know, quite a bit smaller. So it kind of randomizes our um, scale across our uh, fish. Okay, so that's great. But the next problem we have is you can see, like at this point, all the tails are kind of going off to the right a little bit. So no matter what fish you go to, right, his tail's going off to the right a little bit. And so they're all swimming um, to the same beat, so to speak. And so we want to change and randomize that up as well. Okay, so let's come back here to per particle attributes, and I'm going to go to my start. So we're going to randomize for each particle where they start in that uh, swimming loop. So let's right click on that, and since we're randomizing where they start, that's uh, uh, a creation expression. So they're going to start at different points in the animation. Okay, so we're going to go to creation expression. Okay, and you can see we've got my scale and all that sort of stuff. So we're just going to hit enter and we're going to add another line. And so I'm just going to say my start is equal to rand go from zero. I know we have 65 fish, right? Um, and if you don't remember, you can just come over here and look in that group. But I remember we've got 65 fish. Um, so... We're going to do rand 0, 65, and we'll put another semicolon. So again, should have something along uh, these lines. Okay, let's go ahead and click edit. And now, if we rewind and press play, okay. So our fish should all start at different points. Okay, so if we look at this fish, we can see that his uh, tail is off to the right a little bit. Okay, let's go find another fish. So that one's also off to the right. Okay, I know one's in here. Oh, uh, actually they are not because we have not set the uh, instancer to utilize that start. So actually, this is actually doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing. So if we come over here, okay, uh, to our instancer again, and we scroll down to cycle options, we want to click on cycle start. So we want to click on that and we want to come down and put my start in there. Okay. So we've created three custom attributes. Okay. My scale. We wrote an expression for that and we hooked it up here in the instancer. We created my velocity and we hooked it up here in the instancer for aim direction. And then again for the instancer cycle start object, uh, our third and last. Uh, um, uh, attribute that we created uh, my start uh, we've got it hooked up there okay so now if we rewind and play that okay so this fish tails going off to the left and this fish tails going off to the right this fish left and even down to this one you can see this this one's more kind of in the middle somewhere so now we have um, uh, a lot of uh, customized uh, 
attributes uh, working for our fish. And so now if we play that, you see we get something along this line. And so our fish are now facing the direction of where the particle is traveling, or uh, in other words, the uh, the velocity of that uh, particle. Our fish will always uh, face that direction. So, anyways, I hope this has uh, been helpful. And and yeah.